and once it starts, it goes. Uh, once stimulation is applied, it flows from cell to cell and then covers the entire heart. The area of the heart that contracts from one stimulation is called uh, a myocardium. Now, the atria and the ventricles are separated electrically by the fibrous skeleton that we talked about. Remember that the atria are going to contract a fraction of a second before the ventricle because you want them to contract and fill the ventricle, make sure the ventricle is as full as possible so it's pushing a full load of blood out into the arteries and to the body, making it as efficient as possible. Now there is a disease that's called atrial fibrillation where the uh, atrial, and we'll talk about fibrillation later, but where they don't contract right. Uh, people can live with atrial fibrillation because still about 80% of your blood is getting into the ventricles and, uh, and out to the body. On the other hand, if you get something called a ventricle fibrillation, which I'm sure you've all seen in the, you know, in the medical shows, whatever, St. Elsewhere, Gray's Anatomy, Dr. Kildare, whatever, you know, they go, oh, he's in V-fib, and then they grab the paddles and shock him to try to get the ventricles and the atrium, atricles back in rhythm. Uh, you cannot live with ventricle fibrillation. You are going to die within a couple of minutes. So that's why they absolutely will, will treat that. Uh, but, and we'll talk about how the, the current flows through the heart. The current starts at the sinoatrial node. That's the pacemaker. It's located in the right atrium. Uh, the pacemaker potential, slow, spontaneous depolarization. Again, this is where you're, where you're starting to get the contractions, contractions of the atrium. Uh, at about a minus uh, 40 millivolts, no, the other, chan other muscles at a minus 70, uh, voltage-gated calcium channels open, triggering action potential and contraction. Repolarization occurs, opening the voltage-gated uh, potassium channels. Now, this is where you have the importance of potassium and calcium in, uh, in the heart. If you look at the calcium and the potassium values, uh, in the blood, they're kept in a very narrow range because if you have too much calcium or too much potassium or too little, it's going to very much interfere with these calcium and potassium channels and you start to see cardiac arrhythmias. And very, very much so with, uh, with the minor changes in the amount of potassium. Uh, too low, you're gonna, it's inhibitory. Too high, it's excitatory. Uh, are actually opposite of that, and uh, you're, you're near, you have a very narrow range at which your heart and body can function. You move without of that outside of that range, you're looking at a potential of, uh, of simply getting the heart to stop. In the same reason on, uh, on the nursing floors, they've stopped leaving potassium out there because if somebody gave, uh, picked up potassium as if it was uh, some other drug and gave a big amount of it, uh, they would kill the patient and kill the patient very quickly because of the excess potassium. Okay. Uh, pacemaker cells. Electrical, again, we're back to the electrical activity in the heart. The pacemaker cells in the sinoatrial node depolarize spontaneous but a rate which they can be modulated. Epinephrine and norepinephrine increase the production of CAMP, keeps the channels open, that speeds the heart rate. The parasympathetic neurons secrete acetylcholine, which opens potassium channels and slows the heart rate. Uh, myocardial action potentials. Cardiac muscles have a resting potential of about a minus 90 millivolts. When they get up to the minus 40, they, they spontaneously depolarize. Uh, they're depolarized to threshold by the action of the potentials from the sinoatrial node, or the pacemaker, or the heart. Voltage-gated channel, sodium channels open, the min potentials plateau at a plus 15 for 2 to 300 milliseconds. Due to the balance between slow influx of calcium and the influx of uh, efflux of potassium. As potassium uh, gates are open, potassium comes in and repolarization occurs. 
action potentials be spread via the intercalculated dais, the gap junctions, and then they get to the AV node. So the, the depolarization spreads across the atrium, causing the atrium to contract. At that point it hits the AV or the atrioventricular node and then spreads through the bundle of his to conduct, conduct the stimulation of the ventricles. So it goes through the bundle of his and into the Purkinje system and then spreads throughout the ventricles. This allows the ventricles to contract a fraction of a second behind the atrium. Uh, in the intraventricular septum, the bundle of his divides into the bundle branches. Bundle branches become Purkinje fibers which stimulate the ventricular contraction. Sometime, uh, either on your medical shows or in, as a nurse, you will hear of a bundle branch block. And this is where these electrical currents are not getting through. And then you may be looking at putting another type of pacemaker in in order to deal with this because this throws the heart out of rhythm. And here's a diagram of the electrical uh, activity going through. Action potentials from the SA nodes spread, spread rapidly. It tends to one uh, meter per second. The AV node, it slows down. This allows the atrium to contract. Counts for half the time delay between the atrial and the ventricle trend contractions. Picks up at the bundle of his, reaching five meters a second in the Purkinje. The ventricles contract a tenth to two tenths of a second after the atria. Again, that allows the atria to push the rest of the blood into the ventricles. Action potentials in the SA neuro node. Because the atria and ventricles contract as single units, they uh, cannot sustain a contraction. Uh, because the action potential of cardiac cells is long, they have long refractory periods before they contract again. So they contract, and you know, your normal heartbeat is 60 to 70 uh, beats a minute, you know, about one a second. It contracts, <coughs> excuse me, depolarizes, contracts, repolarizes, excuse me, rests and then depolarizes again for the next contraction. So the refractory period or the rest, you have the refractory and the rest periods. Now we're going to talk about the electrocardiogram. It records again, as I said, the electrical activity of the heart, uh, picking up the movement of the body, the ions through the body tissues projected out to the skin. This is where you're painting an electrical picture of the conduction through the heart. As you move, by putting electrodes on the body, you can see this conduction, and by changing either the sequence or the position of the electrodes, you can paint uh, about a 360, pretty much a 360 degree picture of the electrical activity of the heart. Here is an electrical uh, electrocardiogram. You have your P, Q, R, S, and T waves. P wave is atrial depolarization. Q, R, S is ventricular. S, T is a plateau. The T wave is ventricular repolarization. Your atrial repolarization is hidden in the Q, R, S wave, so you don't see it. Here is a typical electrocardiogram. Here's a diagram of how it, how it reads and what's going on in the heart and what's, where the pulses are and where the contractions are. Uh, again, this is where you're putting your, your leads. Uh, right arm, right leg, le right arm, left leg, lead two, lead three, left arm, left leg. Now we put a bunch of leads on, eight or nine, all over the body, and then the computer separates and generates a 12 lead EKG. Again, that painting a much clearer picture of the electrical activity through the heart. This is just, you're looking at a three lead uh, EKG here. Uh, again, you're just looking at where the leads go here, unipolar between the single electrode, the body, one into the machine. 
Limb leads go to the right arm, left arm, and left leg. And there are six chest leads. This is, this is in your book on electrocardiograms. Okay, EKG and heart sounds. Lub occurs after the QRS wave. The dub, again, you're looking at the repolarization of the ventricles. It's at the beginning of the T wave because it's the depolarization has already contracted the, the, the ventricles as they repolarize is your T wave. So logically, the dub would be right at the beginning of the T wave. Okay, here we're detecting ischemia. Ischemia is uh, a breakdown or a depth, death of heart muscle from one, uh, one area or another. And what you're seeing is, one, a lengthened ST and a depressed S wave. And you would see that on the EKG looking uh, for a heart attack, looking for some sort of heart muscle damage. Abnormal arrhythmias. Uh, brachycardia is a slow heart rate, tachycardia is a fast heart rate. Ventricular tachycardia occurs when pacemakers in the ventricles make them contract out of sync with the atria. It's very dangerous, lead to ventricular fibrillation. Like I said, you know, they all yell, he's in V-fib or he's in V-tac. Uh, they get out the paddles and they shock him to try to get it into into a normal rhythm, and that's called a normal sinus rhythm. A flutter is extremely fast, but coordinated contraction of fibrillation is uncoordinated, pumping between the atria and the ventricles. Here are just some diagrams on the EKG. Types of fibrillation. Atrial result in an atrial flutter. Atrial muscles cannot effectively contract. AV nodes can't keep pace. Uh, reduces cardiac output, I was saying by 20%, this is by 15%. Uh, increases the risk of stroke and heart failure. If, they, if you have atrial fib, they are absolutely going to put you on Coumadin or Warfarin, uh, Plavix, something that's going to keep you from clotting as easily uh, because this this flutter and this uh, regurgitation uh, and poor blood flow uh, is, is a uh, just asking to throw a clot. And so they will put you on some sort of blood thinner to keep you from throwing a clot. Via ventricular, ventricular fibrillation, you can't pump blood. And you are going, they're going to do uh, you're going to do CPR until you get an electrical defibrillation to get uh, reset your heart rhythm. That's what we talked about, the paddles. AV node block is seen in the PR interval. Uh, as the PR gets larger, it exceeds 0.2 seconds. Uh, the, with a second degree, the, that's first degree. Second degree, the electrical waves cannot pass to the ventricles. Third degree is complete. No stimulation gets through. You do have a pacemaker that's built into the Purkinje fibers that takes over 20 to 40 beats per minute. So you can live until they can get in and put a pacemaker in, but you're generally on your back, and if you've got oxygen, you're doing better, but you're sucking for air because you're just you're moving some blood but not enough to do anything but just lay there and try to stay alive until they can get a pacemaker in. Okay, let's see if I've got anything else here. And I think that's it. I've lost part of this. Okay, we're going to stop right now and go on. Uh, I'll come back with, with the rest of it, but I'm going to get this uh, kind of mixed and out. Okay, thank you.